Welcome to No Longer Conformed. I'm Eric Garthy, and we are studying practical Christianity, learning to relate to one another. In this session, we'll be looking at John chapter 15 and verse 17, love one another. Let's look at those verse, that verse, verse 17, because these things I command you that you love one another. If you were to stop the first hundred people you meet on the street and ask them, what's wrong with the church today? I'm confident you'll get answers. Of course, you might not like what you hear. Many of the answers will have to do with how we interact with others as Christians. Basically, the health of the church. Jesus knows what is needed to make the church healthy. In fact, he told the Apostle Paul to tell us how to love one another. He revealed four ways to, um, to love one another. Love with sacrificial love, purifying love, caring love, and unifying love. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 25 down to verse 32. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word, that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. So husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it. Just as the Lord does the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh and of his bones. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to, to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. <clears throat> First, we're to love one another with sacrificial love. Verse 25, the second part of it, husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. Gave himself for her. John chapter 15, Verses 12 and 13, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. Second Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might become rich. Jesus was the perfect sacrifice for our need. His followers are part of that same vine. We are to bear the same fruit. John chapter 15, verses 1 through 8 tell us, Jesus says, I am the, the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they're burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be given to you. It shall be done for you. By this, my father is glorified that you bear much fruit. So you will be my disciples. And then Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, 
I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So we are, <clears throat> excuse me, we are to love one another with sacrificial love. But second, we are to love one another with purifying love. Look at verses 26 to 28. That he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word. That he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. So husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. It says, sanctify and cleanse her that he might present her. Jesus' purity changes, changes people. Every life impacts all the lives it touches for good or for evil. We voice this reality every day. Jesus' motivation drove him to impact his people in a purifying way. His purpose, that he might present her to himself, a glorious church. Our motivation should be to live our Christian life in such a way that it impacts one another with purity. And then third, we're to love one another with caring love. Verse 29, no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it just as the Lord does the church, nourishes and cherishes. God meets our need. Philippians 4.19, And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Jehovah Jireh, that just that name, it means the God who provides. Nourish means to feed. And cherish means to keep warm. Christians are called to consider others before themselves to make sure other Christians are taken care of, nourished in God's word, cherished in God's love. Christ's body ministers grace among its members. And then fourth, we're to love one another with unifying love, verses 30 and 30 to 32. For we are members of his body of his flesh and of his bones. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. We're members of his body. A healthy body is a unified body. Psalm 133, verse 1, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. A healthy body is a diverse body. All different parts, all needed parts, all loved parts. Ephesians chapter four, verse one tells us, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness and long suffering, bearing with one another in love endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There's one body and one spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. But to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, now this he ascended, what does it mean? But that also, he also first descended into lower parts of the earth. He who descended is also the one who ascended far above the heavens that he might fill all things. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith 
and to the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about in the cunning uh, with every word of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness and deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love, may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Love is the gift in which one size fits all. It's the best gift of the spirit. Christian love has nothing to do with emotion. It's active. First Corinthians chapter 13 verses four through eight. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself, is not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. Listen, without this kind of love, all we do for Christ is meaningless. We're called to love one another. You have a great day.